Sure, right, namaste, guys. How's it going? Uh, once again, welcome to my channel. Uh, this time, I had the distinct pleasure of interviewing Lauren, who is a uh, indie artist from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, she is great. Uh, her voice is extremely good when it's live. So I would recommend that you guys check her out. She is also on Spotify. I will include all the links below. Um, and before I go any further, I just wanted to say thanks to uh, Coffee News for hooking me up with this pretty nice T-shirt. Coffee News can be found anywhere. Uh, they are funny. They are great. Um, and I love, I love reading this stuff. Um, next, I would like to shout out to uh, Mad Muggle Memes, who are a funny memes page on um, Facebook. They do lots of humorous stuff, lots of historical educational stuff. So they are awesome as well. Check them out, guys. Um, I'd like to also do a shout out to my uh, friend Annette, who has her own um, uh, cosmetics uh, brand. Uh, so check our website out. It's called uh, lifestylewithannette.com. Uh, she's also on um, on Instagram. So check her Instagram as well. I will include the website and the Instagram link below. Um, last but not least, I'd like to say uh, a big shout out to uh, Camp Forktail Creek in uh, Jim Corbett National Park in India. They do a lot of conservation work. Um, you can visit them as well. I'll include all the links to them uh, down below. So do check them out as well. It's a great initiative. Uh, so without any further uh, uh, further wait, let's get into the interview and uh, thank you for joining me again. So um, hi guys, welcome to my channel. So I am I am here with uh, uh, Lauren, who is a, a singer songwriter. She is amazing. I love her stuff. I've listened to her on Spotify. She is on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I will include the links below. Um, so welcome, welcome to the channel, Lauren. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here. I'm really excited. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and and so are we. So are we. Um, uh, Lauren, if I could ask, um, how did your journey begin? Uh, when did you decide you wanted to be a musician? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Such a good question. I feel like there's probably so many ways I could answer it, but I mean, long story short, you know, um, I grew up in a musical family, mm -hmm. um, and so it was just kind of like in in our nature. Um, you know, my mom was a vocal instructor and a choir director and a piano teacher and everything. Wow. And, um, my mom or my dad, uh, played guitar and, uh, they were both involved in like church music and everything. So I was just kind of always absorbing from them and, and learning about music and, and singing and everything from my mom at, at a pretty young age. So I have uh, them to thank for an early exposure, uh, to music, but, um, you know, and I started kind of dabbling in, in songwriting when I was in high school. Um, and then I decided to go to uh, college in Nashville, Tennessee, at a cool. university called Belmont. And um, that definitely was a huge part of kind of kickstarting, you know, my, my music career. So I, I was able to minor in, um, you know, vocal performance there, uh, as well as just be a part of a lot of incredible ensembles and uh, acapella groups and yeah. Uh, got to really explore um, explore a lot of, of musical angles and uh, I also was able to like song right there so I worked with someone named uh, Robbie Calvo who's a, a guitar instructor and a fantastic songwriter and um, he kind of mentored me for a while and we worked together on putting putting out an EP of kind of like some folk singer songwriter tunes um, right. and that was that was so so fun um, but I would say I really struggled in Nashville you know it's kind of it's just so overwhelming and right. there's so much uh so many like incredibly talented people and i felt like i was like still really trying to find like my voice you know and where exactly i fit in 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 all of that and um and i think you know just like the competitive nature you know even though it is like a very friendly community right. it right. still is you know competitive because everyone is right. so talented <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So for me, I felt like that kind of like it shut me down rather than inspired me to like, 
okay, well, I'm just going to, because, you know, I moved there when I was 18. Like, I really didn't know what my sound was. I didn't really know, like, what I wanted to say yet. I just kind of knew, like, oh, I like singing. I like writing songs. Um, and so all of those pieces were, were so helpful in, in helping me to find my voice um, and, you know, who I, who I am as an artist. So um, it wasn't... You know, so I had a, I had some some kind of detours and, and some fun adventures. I lived in Thailand for uh, six months, wow. which was amazing. And I, you know, another big part of my passion is you know um, nonprofit work, uh, social that's justice true. work, um, and that's that's what I majored in in school. And so I was. Yeah. Um, I was in Thailand interning with an anti-trafficking organization um, called Urban Light. Uh, so wow. they they do amazing work. Um, yeah, they work with young male victims of sexual exploitation in Northern right. Thailand. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. Yeah, heavy work, heavy work. Um, yeah, 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 but it was incredible. Um, but in, in going to Thailand, I was kind of like, okay, I'm pursuing, you know, this passion now. So music is going to have to take a back right. seat. But what I really truly found is I actually found a community of uh, like-minded artists in right. Thailand. And it right. actually ended up being something that was like hugely transformational for my music career because, you know, there would be these really creative open mic nights and it was just really encouraged, like whatever you have to share, share it. It doesn't have to be polished. It doesn't have to be perfect. And for me, I really needed that open openness and that really encouraging, you know, space to start to feel comfortable, you know, accompanying myself and playing my songs and, um, all those kinds of things. So when that internship was over, I moved back to my hometown of Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I'm currently right. based still. And um, that was when I kind of like, ironically, like moving away from Music City for me was what really helped me to start to feel more confident than ever, you know, because I was able to kind of get away from the noise of like what everyone else is doing, like what's popular and just figure out like, okay, what do I want to do? Um, and I just got, I'm, you know, just some really fortunate. I, we have a family friend here who, um, was in like an EDM band in like the nineties right, and two thousands. Right. That's still con- going on today called the e- echoing green. His name is Joey Belleville. Um, and so we connected and I asked him to produce a few songs for me. Um, right. And then it just actually, it just turned into this really like synergistic relationship of like, um, we both bring these very different things to the table and they work right. so well together. And then in addition, you know, he took on a very like mentoring role as well. Um, and so, yeah, so all of that just kind of kickstarted it and, and got me to where I am now. <laughs> wow. That, that's an incredible journey um, from, from starting from um, uh, USA and going to Thailand and then coming back home. That's really cool. That's really cool. And um, I, I will, yes, yes, I would definitely like to talk to you more about uh, your experiences in, in Thailand. But yeah. before I do that, can I can I just ask, um, so in, in music school, you were studying theory and things like that? Or you, okay, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it was great. I was a, I was a minor, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't doing it a full time, um, which music majors are just, there's so much work, like everyone right. who's, there's so many like classes you have to take and everything. So, um, right. you know, I kind of found that that in between middle ground. Um, but yeah, so I took theory classes, was in ensembles, took private lessons. So it was right. yeah a really fulfilling and, and awesome learning experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. And um, you, you mentioned uh, uh, working with someone who does uh, electronic um, dance music. And yeah. I know people that love that stuff. Yeah. So are you are you really um, is that something that influences your work, electronic dance music? Or? Yeah, I think it's so. Yes and no. So I, you know, kind of was coming from more of like a singer songwriter, very like stripped down acoustic um, right. kind of mindset. And so uh, Joey was one of the people that encouraged me to embrace production rather right, than right, run right. away from it, you know, and just, you know, he just was encouraging me like, you can write a catchy hook and you can write a pop song, but it right. still has depth right. and it still has meaning, you know, it doesn't, right. doesn't have to be fluff just because it's, you know, produced. And so, yeah. um, and I, I really like, you know, was really nervous about that at first. Cause I was like, Oh, you know, these songs, they're so raw They're you know, and, yeah. and he was like, well, that's okay. Let's like 
add all of these really cool elements to help tell the story and like let's get creative with it right. and it can enhance you know the the raw product and and still even have a raw feel and in, in some cases um but it's but it's you know got this these layers and uh right. excitement right. to it so um sure. i we kind of meet in the middle of you know we're what we do is not you know it's not dance music it's not you know edm it's kind of in an indie pop rock kind of genre right. um so using his production and and uh and you know he just right. really is he's so creative and it's been so fun to just it's so great to see like what he comes up with and he's encouraged me to to like really step into a production mindset and so yeah. after working with him for a few years i feel so much more confident in like making suggestions and I can hear things now that I wasn't able to hear before. And right, yeah, right. so it's been really cool. Awesome. Awesome. And, and, and you mentioned that you come from a music uh, family. Um, so what, uh, growing up, I guess, what, what did you listen to at, at home? Uh, what was yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. My parents listened to a, a lot of like, like a lot of stuff. Um, I remember Journey being a big one. <laughs> right, right, right. I see. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also uh we also listened to a lot of like Earth, Wind and Fire. So there was right. um, you know, there was some kind of R and B in there. Um right. they they really had like a pretty a pretty wide um you know music tastes and so we kind of listened to a lot of everything my dad is a real big classic rock fan too so right. Right. you know we would go on road trips and he would we would play this game with him where he would you know we'd be listening to the classic rock station and he you know have us like he would he would make a whole game of guessing you know the mm -hmm. artist the song and the year that the album came out and he could even describe the you know cover art of the album and stuff so wow. so yeah that's they were very cool. very into music that, that's that's really cool that's really cool i mean my my parents are not particularly uh, musical but uh, growing up in india you know i had i had bollywood i had um they had oh. spice girls um bon jovi uh, awesome. everything so it's it's it's, it's, it's yeah yeah it's it's incredible like you know uh, anyone living anywhere on this planet can listen to so much um stuff i mean for example you know i i i saw you on facebook so i and and you know you're you're in america i'm in i'm in new zealand and uh, we still you know find each other on on yeah. social media and things like that so it's so cool it's so cool so um, cool and i love that yeah we're just things are so much more yeah. global now and like there's yeah. so much more opportunity for connection it's so exciting yes it's it's incredible and um how are you finding um social media what's your um because i know you do live live sessions and things like yeah. that mm -hmm. um how do you find that what, what's your experience been like yeah so um i had a friend in nashville um and he kind of opened my eyes to a lot just kind of the power of social media when right. it comes to right. music marketing um and so there's a company called entrepreneur that he oh, wow. now works for um and so this it they, they just provide all of these amazing trainings for independent artists like me um to navigate the world of social media and social media marketing and you know it, the, it all kind of boils down to the question of like how do you find people who are going to like and appreciate and enjoy what you have to offer um right. you know and i think that's that can be obviously like finding people who like your music is one right. of the hardest parts of being an artist you know because right. some people are going to love it some people are going to be indifferent to it and you know it's nothing personal it's just that's just how it goes um right. and right. so um so i've been using a lot of those trainings and it's it's just been really exciting because it, it, it totally allows and opens doors like this where you know i'm i'm meeting people that are connecting with the music and obviously that's like you know i want the stories that i tell and i want you know the right. experience that I come from to resonate with other people that's right. you know the whole point of it so yes. it's yeah. it's it's really exciting so it's, yeah yeah definitely definitely and um I guess um let, yeah let, let's talk about Thailand how did you yeah. um get involved in in a in a non-profit totally so um, when I was in Nashville, I um, did some internships with some uh, different organizations. Some of them um, were 
um, human trafficking focused. Uh, there was one called In Slavery Tennessee, right. um, yeah. and I was a case management intern um, there. So got to work with like domestic human trafficking. Right. Um, and then I also, um, you know, got to work with some other organizations. There's one called Social Enterprise Alliance that I interned for in college. Right. Right. I actually work for them now. Oh um, wow. Which is, <laughs> which it kind of all started, you know, in Nashville. But um, I mean, I'm I'm happy if you if you like, I can share the link for them. Um, sure, the, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, I'll send you the link to to awesome. our work. Um, yeah, it's it's it was cool to to have that become you know now my my full time job and you know that helps to support my music career too. So it all works together. But um, so with uh with going to Thailand, I always knew that I wanted to. Um, learn more about, you know, international human trafficking and how it, right. you know, how it worked in other cultures, what services were available, um, yeah. you know, in other countries and, and to get that experience. Um, and I was really fortunate that my school, Belmont, had a, um, it was like through the study abroad program or study abroad office, there was a grant program called LUMOS. Um, and it basically, you submitted this very long, very intense application right, uh, right, right. to do some kind of international project, you know, and uh, whether it was, you know, volunteer based or learning based or, or whatever it was. Um, and so they would they would help fund you. Um, so as soon as I heard about that, I was like, OK, that's what I'm going to do, like right after right. I graduate. Um, and it was kind of through like a some random like mutual connections you know uh someone that i worked with went to um had gone to thailand and and one of her friends from her time there still worked there um and right. operated an ngo there and so it was just all these little pieces that um i finally found um urban light and it was a great fit and i met the founder you know over zoom and right. and we we had a great conversation and i was like yeah this is this is what i want to do and so um, the second half of 2017, um, I spent in Chiang Mai, Thailand, um, right, lived right. in a volunteer house, um, got to travel a lot too on the weekends, you know, all over Thailand and, uh, Vietnam and Cambodia. Um, but then, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five, I was working in their day, like drop-in center. And so that's where, you know, these young men and these boys um, would come during the day. You know, they knew they could get a shower and a hot meal and a place to sleep mm. or play games or play music mm. or, you know, whatever it was um, that they wanted to do. And and it was just it was just amazing, you know, got to really like get to know these these boys, even, you know, despite the language barriers. And, you know, I, I learned some Thai and, uh, wow. you know, one of the purposes of of going was to kind of help teach mm -hmm. English as a second language but they were like way more interested in teaching me Thai so right. after a while it was kind of like that's fine you know like right. this is what I want to do like we're th that's cool um, yeah. but we did tons of art projects and you know workshops around health and um, we did excursions mm -hmm. and um, and then we played a lot of music too so awesome. I they'd play guitar I'd play ukulele there were like two American songs that they right, that they right. knew and they'd they they'd get me to sing them with them like over and over again and then they would play Thai music and I would just play along and and um, it was it was fantastic like it was right, you know right. just to see like all of their vulnerabilities and all of the obstacles that they had faced in their lifetime um, their very short lifetimes you know they were so young um, and you know they just still had this joy and this vibrancy and this resiliency to them and you know it's 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 really you know and and the organization did a lot of work around prevention as well mm -hmm. i was kind of more on the you know the end side of it of like okay how do we help you know how do we give these boys a safe place and then right. how do we also help them to you know find other um you know other ways of of, of earning an income you know and supporting themselves supporting their families um you know, and so they just, yeah. you know, very vulnerable, like just very overlooked by a lot of people in, in their in the country and in their communities. But this organization, you know, really looks out for them and takes care of them. And it was just yeah, it yeah. was just so fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's also that's really great. I wish I wish I had done more mm. work like that. Um, I mean, I still can, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's really encouraging. Um, and inspiring um, hearing from you that, you know, what your 
um, time in Thailand was like. Mm. So that's awesome. And what what would you, I mean, if, if people want to get into that, you know, helping others, what is yeah. your suggestion? How should one go about uh, pursuing Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Well, I would say that there are so many issues that feed into human trafficking. And that's, you know, I didn't realize that when I started working in this field. Um, But, you know, whether you're tackling um, homelessness, you know, whether you are supporting youth in, you know, youth activities and involvement, um, you know, if you are helping um, folks who struggle with substance abuse, you know, any of these issues, they all touch, you know, human trafficking, you know, it's all just, it's all a, a web of, um, you know, vulnerabilities and obstacles that people face. Um, and so, um, you know, if you're, whether you're interested in, in human trafficking or whether you're interested in another, you know, um, social initiative, um, or social issue, I think, um, I'm, you know, everyone has, you know, organizations in their community that help to solve these issues, help to fight human trafficking. And so just like getting involved in volunteering on a local level, you know, there are bound to be, you know, after school programs and, you know, homeless outreach um, and these kinds of things that you can get involved in. So I just, you know, it's, it's just the people that you meet are just like so fantastic. And um, it really also just like provides perspective too of, of, um, yeah, so it's 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 always just it can be really challenging, but it's also very um, important. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I guess one of the challenges would I imagine would be um, um, the emotional toll of the work. I mean, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's a very like you said, it's a very heavy, um, yeah. heavy kind of kind of work. Um, so how how does one uh, take care of themselves emotionally, I guess, when they're involved in such things, what would be your advice? Um, Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Yeah. And that's something that I definitely, definitely struggled with. I mean, the first like half of the time that I was there, you know, the first three months I was in Thailand, like I would cry in the bathroom probably every day um, because it is, it's just so, it's so heavy. And, and um, there's, there's this like, you know, just darkness to it um and I think you know in my experience too sometimes I would forget you know because we're just playing you know we're playing uno we're you know playing guitar together and you know and and that's and that's good too when you can just have those like human moments you know of of just connection and fun and you know where you you know it gives it gives like dignity to the interaction you know because you're right 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 you know, that you're like, oh, this is like, this is a person, you know? And, uh, and so just having those like really sweet moments, um, those, are, those, those are really like really helpful as well. Um, but I mean, for me, it was just like, I, I journaled, I made sure I got enough sleep, um, right. and I'm a verbal processor. So right. I had, you know, a few people that I could trust that I was able to just share with like, Hey, this is really hard. Um, you know, the things that I'm, you know, hearing about and seeing are, are really difficult. And, um, but it does, it does wear on you after a while. So, you know, it can, you know, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, just can only handle it for a short time. And that's sure. like perfectly sure. reasonable and, and understandable because it is, it's just so, it's so heavy, but that's kind of my, that'd be my suggestion is just make sure that you're giving space right, for right. yourself to process and, and, and taking care of yourself and just eating, eating enough and yeah. <laughs> getting enough sleep and yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> eating, eating definitely helps. I mean, I yeah. do like how, uh, <laughs> while we are all staying at home, it's uh, everyone's baking, everyone's. Yeah. Uh, have, have, have you picked any hobbies um, for uh, uh, during the lockdown? Have you, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I started roller skating. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah um a couple we had you know our little our little quarantine pod um, right, right. and so a couple of us we all just bought roller skates and right, we went down right. to the the tennis uh the tennis park outside and and right. just yeah it was it's it's been fun I'm yeah I have I've only had like one bad fall so far so right right yeah. <laughs> but you I gotta mean, get I, it out of the way but <laughs> yes yeah 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 it's such a um 
balance a uh, balance thing with with the skates and stuff so yeah that's it's um and and so coming, coming back to yes yes I it thought it would be. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i haven't been skiing um but i have friends who tell me yeah it's it's, it's so hard to balance yourself on 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 that um skiing. totally yeah did you pick up any any hobbies or you know baking or anything like that <laughs> no no not not baking but I started cooking um and I say that because I started when I cook I don't normally follow like a recipe or anything but this cool. is like the first time where I started actually looking at a recipe and doing measuring things and, and you know doing cooking that way um, oh, that's so awesome. I guess, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's cool it's cool it's very soothing and um mm. Just I, I just eat a lot during the lockdown and um, stuff. But how how um how did you decide on um a ukulele, a, an electric ukulele? What was your? I mean, I think it's it's really awesome. But how did you decide you. on that? Yeah. Um. So I was drawn to. Well, there were a few things. One, um, growing up, my hands were always really small. So playing guitar, doing like you know the bar chords. Um, it was really challenging for me because um, I just couldn't get my fingers to, to stretch that far or whatever. Um, and honestly, playing the ukulele and like starting there made me a better guitar player. So right. it's all kind yeah. of come full circle now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so that was that was part of it. But um, I just it's so goofy. But I remember watching um, How I Met Your Mother. Did right. you see like the ending of that? You know, I, uh, that's, did you ever that's watch it? Thing. I have, I watched bits and pieces of it. Cool. But I have friends who have seen like the whole season, uh, all, all, yeah. all seasons, like twice. <laughs> oh so, my gosh, that's a lot yeah. of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's... The, the, what, what happens in the end? Do, does he uh, does he reveal who the who the mother is in the end? Yes, finally, after like a long time, you know, you finally right, see right, who right. the mother is. And right. she has a ukulele and she oh, plays, right. you know, a very moving uh, rendition right, of right. La Vie en Rose. And right. so I saw that and was like, oh, well, I need to play the ukulele now. Like, <laughs> so, uh, so I got an acoustic ukulele and, you know, started learning on that, started right, writing right. on that. And then it was right when I got home from Thailand, um, you know, I had... I had asked my family for Christmas. Um, I had sent them, you know, a few, like I'd just seen the electric ukuleles online um, right. and they're, they're not super common. They weren't easy to find, but I just right. was like, you know, to my parents, like, well, I don't know, maybe like, it's just, yeah. if you could find one, like that'd yeah. be cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, lo and behold, like they, they found one and it's uh, from a South African brand called Risa. Oh, okay. Um, Ooh, yeah cool, and cool. so I'm, I'm not even sure like how they found it like it's it's so right. cool uh right. and then that was like awesome because I still got to play ukulele which I had grown to just love but it had that you know that kind of alternative um more you know indie rock flair that yeah. I had wanted so oh uh, yes, yes of course yeah and I wanted to ask I am um, in your video I've seen you playing with a band are they your permanent band or what what is the um... yeah so um when we record stuff it's kind of just me and joey um yeah. you know trading off you know figuring out what we're doing um and then we'll we'll bring people in um on the song that we're working on now that we're almost about to start mixing um we had my dad play on it, um, which right, was really right. fun. Uh, so it, it kind of is like a rotation. Um, and, you know, I'm definitely at a place where I want, like, I would love to have kind of a more permanent, you know, band and get to, um, you know, because there's so many cool venues, you know, yeah. would love to, once, you know, COVID passes, um, hopefully, um, would love to, um, you know, consider touring, even just like small tours. Um, you know, with, with a band. So it's, it's kind of something that I'm, I would love to, to really establish. Right. Right. And um, yeah, one, once we are all able to move around, is there a particular um, venue that you really want to perform at? Is that some place that you consider like your dream, um, dream, dream venue where you would Great like to question. perform? Great question. Yeah. So um, being in Nashville for so long, um, there's a venue there called the Ryman uh, that's right, pretty right. 
Yeah, pretty well known. And it's it's like an old church that was converted into a, a venue space. And it is, right. oh my gosh, every show I've seen, I saw there was just like a different level of magic, you know, just so, so awesome. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would say that that's like, that's the dream. That is like a million miles away from where I am now. But if I could pin one, you know, and say, okay, <laughs> that would be it. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Because I, I know people, um, musicians in in um, uh, Auckland where I am, who uh, yeah. who think about performing at places like Wembley and and whatnot. And it's yeah, it is it is quite a long journey to get there. But um, yeah, in terms of overseas travel and things like that, is there like an overseas venue that you would like to uh, maybe perform perform that's at? great question i don't know about like a specific venue more just like i there's just certain cities that i love you know of course, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. i i would love like when i was in chiang mai they had all these really fun cool like festivals um for poets and artists and musicians um right. so like that would be so fun to go back and and play at one of those um and then you know i would like it'd be so cool to do like a european tour and that kind of right. thing right. I think for me, I I see myself as more of a like a small venue artist. Right. Um, like you know, if I if one day you know down the road I got booked for you know a stadium tour, I wouldn't say no. But um, my favorite types of shows are um, like house like house shows, you know, and they're just like they're so intimate, they're so right. Right. Um, and you just get to really connect with people. Um, and that's, that's, what's important to me, you know, is the connection piece. And so, you know, I'm sure, like, I don't know, cause it hasn't happened for me yet, but I'm sure there's, you know, when you play like a bigger venue, I'm sure there's like an electricity and an energy to that right. too. So I'm sure I would love it, but, um, but I kind of see myself as like, you know, playing mid-size, maybe small, large venues, but maybe not quite the stadium type. Right, right. <laughs> And then one thing I just wanted to mention is I watched your live uh, videos on YouTube. I think it's really amazing that you can play live and hit all the right notes when you're singing. <laughs> is it a lot of practice or did it just come to you naturally or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and thank you for thinking I hit all the right notes because I watch them back and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's so, probably because you're it. perfectionist. But um, I think, yeah, it was, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Thank um, you. Thank you. I think probably like, you know, I've had, I've had a lot of training in a lot of different ways over the years. And so I think that, um, that helps, you know, with, with precision and, and accuracy, you know, um, especially being in like choir and acapella groups and ensembles, you know, you have to really be listening for what everyone else is, is doing and, and be so in tune with them. Um, and so I think that really helped to develop my, my ear for pitch. Um, oh. and then what I ended up kind of having to then focus on was, uh, you know, when I first started working with Joey, he could tell that I had been in choir for so long because it's yeah. not like I sang, was singing classically, but I was singing very well, you know, <laughs> like, and he encouraged me, like, it doesn't have to sound pretty, you know? there is a rawness and an emotion. And so I just kind of started like playing with it. And, you know, what, what would I sound like if I wasn't trying to sound pretty, you know, if I was trying to, you know, communicate something rather than strive for perfection. Um, and, and that, that kind of, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for that lesson. I learned so much right. out of that. Course. So I'll ask you one last question before you, um, you, you've got your ukulele there. Would you like to perform or something? Sure, um, I'd like love to. Cool, cool. So I'll just ask you one last question. Um, Great. Is there a particular artist that you really want to collaborate with? Um, yeah. Such a good question. Um, okay, there's a couple. So um, I love Phoebe Bridger's music. Um she is uh have you heard her stuff um no no not not particularly mm -hmm. from yeah cool so she's got like a folk rock kind of sound oh, okay. she's kind of edgy and her her lyrics are just like they're so raw um so i really love i love her stuff um there's another artist like kind of in the same vein as her um named noah gunderson 
Um, yeah. And I've been listening to him for a while and, and I would, it'd be, yeah, I'd love to collaborate with him. He's just kind of crazy creative. Um, and then, but like my, like big artist, I guess <laughs> I right. love the killers. Um, oh, so... yes, I definitely know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so if I could do like, yeah, actually um, Phoebe uh, Bridgers just did a collab right. with them and I'm like, oh dang, that's yeah. awesome. My two faves. <laughs> Pretty cool. Because they had that song, um, uh, uh, Mr. Brightside. Like a, Mr. Oh, that's that's a pretty cool What's song that? as well. That's a that's a really cool song. Yes, yes, yes. I I love I love that song as well. Um, fun yeah, one. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you'd like to perform something for us, um, just sure. take it away. Absolutely, I will. And thank you again for having me on. This has been so much oh, fun. Oh no, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. All right, and this is my ukulele. <laughs> All righty. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay, great. Let's see, what should I play? Oh, yeah. Since we talked about it.
that was really cool that was so cool that was awesome and Thank like you. i said you hit you hit all the notes like i was like wow wow <laughs> Thank that's so you. cool that's <laughs> really awesome that. <laughs> yeah 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 no, no worries no worries yeah that was so awesome that was so awesome and I imagine uh, you've got a really busy schedule. So thank you so much for making the time. Thank um, you so much for having me. This was so oh, much no, that's fun. Okay, that's okay. That's so, so good. <laughs> um, so great, great talking to you. It was, it was really, um, for me, it was like a learning um, thing, oh, listening wow. to you. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I would definitely want, I would love to have you back on uh, another time. Great. And you can play us some other music. Uh, so down great. and yeah and and i will um, um include all the links below to your facebook your instagram your spotify and everything and yes, if you want you. to send me the ngo links i'm happy to um, include them in into the uh, video absolutely. as well absolutely absolutely um, so thank you thank you so much thank you so much for joining us and sorry guys before i go um i just wanted to say um a big thank you to uh coffee news i am they they hooked me up with this really nice t-shirt um, so Coffee News is like a New Zealand um, uh, company that they make little newsletters, overall newspapers, but it's full of like jokes and um, some advertising and things like that. So it's really fun reading oh, their, uh, their material. Um, so they're really great. And, and look, Lauren, you are great as well. And thank you for having, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. For coming on. <laughs> um, and I wish great. you have a really great day. Um, thank you, you too. And, and, and I'll speak to you again sometime. Sounds good. You. Thank Sounds you so much, Lauren. Thank you. Good All to right. see you. Have a good one. See you. See you. <laughs> Take care.